Thank you. Thank you very much, Tadeusz. Thank you, National Library of Israel, for hosting this event. Um, as you said, I would like to give a little bit of context as to why, how and why these pictures came about. Uh, why Poland? Why not Rwanda? Why, why not somewhere else? Uh, so I will attempt to share my screen and give a little bit of context to this work. This work started for me really in 1975 um, when I went to Poland, and this will just be a brief two minutes. Uh, I went to Poland um, uh, as a student of photography, went with a writer, uh, I was doing a senior project, senior thesis, and we went on speculation and did a book on uh, what we could find of Jewish life in Poland there. It became the book called Polish Jews, the final chapter. Um, in 1977, uh, never thinking I would go back to Poland, not really realizing it at all, but three and a half years later as a working professional photographer, I was back there to cover world events pretty much for magazines, um, basically uh, simply called magazine photojournalism. Uh, but on my own, quietly, very, very quietly, uh, without any fanfare, I also photographed the Jewish communities. Uh, wherever I could find people and, you know, and found people who I photographed three and a half years earlier. So they knew me in a way. Uh, for the next five years from 1978 to 1983, um, again, I was back, back and forth to Poland for world events, uh, Pope John Paul II, his two trips, his first major pilgrimage there, uh, which was a milestone, uh, the Solidarity Movement, Lech Wałęsa. Uh, I was back several times, but always very quietly photographing the Polish Jewish community and then archiving those pictures, really archiving those negatives and contact sheets up until about 10 years ago, because I didn't really want people to see them. Uh, it was a project I was doing for myself. Uh, I went back 30 years after my last Venice visit in 2013 uh, and to a whole new beginning, to a, what, what's been uh, labeled or called the Jewish Renaissance, uh, Jewish revival. Uh, this particular picture is at JCC Krakow. It's um, Rabbi Avi Bomo's very first Sunday school class teaching kids about their Jewish roots. And, and it, 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 it was fascinating. For me, it's fascinating that this could even occur. Uh, and so since 2013, I have been back and forth several times uh, photographing the Jewish community and, uh, and life and culture there. Uh, this particular picture was from the um, Jewish Culture Festival in Krakow. Uh, it's the largest Jewish culture festival in the world. Uh, my last visit up until this year was in 2019, when this picture was made. Um, this is at the, the gates of Birkenau, uh, also called the Gate of Hell. Um, this is a group picture of the uh, Ride for the Living, the JCC crack of sponsored um event uh it's a fundraiser for jcc krakow where people from all over the world come and they ride to jcc krakow and um this past april um months later COVID took over the world everything shut down um some people stayed shut down longer than others uh and but i was invited back in april um to uh, by jcc krakow to photograph what was happening there now. And I saw it in connection to my ongoing work. This is all part and parcel of the ongoing course of Jewish life in Poland. This is how the Jewish community is helping people in need. This is the front gate of JCC Krakow. Um, this is, in, in Ukrainian, the sign says, welcome. Uh, and every day, seven days a week, uh, every single day, there are lines of hundreds of people, Ukrainian refugees, primarily women and children, uh, waiting online to get access to the free distribution center inside the building where they receive 
essentials. Uh, they, they pick and choose from, uh, from clothing to food, to diapers, to uh, sanitary supplies, you name it, it's there and it's free. It's free to them. JCC Krakow went in essence to the bench, to, to the mattresses as a Godfather reference. Um, they, uh, they went full heel. As Jonathan Ornstein, the, the executive director of JCC Krakow has stated, our community was devastated by the Holocaust because the world was mostly silent. Now we have the opportunity to help others and we are doing just that. So as an institution, uh, JCC Krakow punches way above its weight level, <laughs> way, way, way. Uh, and so every day at the peak, upwards of 600 Ukrainian refugees were online, out the door, down the street, waiting for access to the distribution center. Um, they needed to show their passport uh, and there uh, they were met by uh, Ukrainian speaking uh, both volunteers as well as new hirees uh, to help to assist them. Uh, Polish, Ukrainian, Russian, those are three separate languages. So people needed assistance. Uh, to date, as of, as of now, uh, 200 tons, over 200 tons of essential items, clothing, food, medicine, hygienic supplies, baby items, toys have been given out from the building, this all costs money. Um, this particular picture is a Ukrainian um, family from Mikolaev waiting their turn under an awning because it was a cold and rainy day. Um, 120,000 people have been helped directly from this building by the JCC, 120,000 people. Um, many, many more through its combined partners in Poland as well as Ukraine. Uh, this particular picture is a woman, uh, Lilia from Odessa, waiting in line, like everybody else. This woman was a kindergarten teacher. I spoke with her. She spoke some English. She spoke enough English. Uh, she, her name is Catherine. Catherine. Um, she's there with her daughter, Julia, who is eight uh, at the open gate of JCC. Um, she is also there with her 12-year-old son, and had been staying with Ukrainian friends in their crack in their crack of apartments since March 9th. This was in April. Uh, speaking in English, and her mother remained in Kharkiv. Um, speaking English, she said, I think we must stay in Krakow until May. Well, that was a while ago. Uh, behind this woman and her baby are food supplies every day, bulk items of food. And, and, and other materials come into JCC for distribution. Uh, volunteers, volunteers as well as staff redistribute the bulk items into smaller personal um, sizes that people can take. This woman is uh, Maria and she is from Zhitomir. Uh, All those, all those uh, bags, all those duffel bags were, had just come in, they're being rapidly covered up because there's a, about to be an oncoming uh, storm, a rainstorm, but they had just been donated by the Stephen Wise Free Synagogue in New York City. Um, it's 80 duffel bags filled with everything from medicines to, to everything and um, Sit, uh, institutions, synagogues, individuals from around the world have, are donating and giving money to JCC Krakow. And uh, I'm sure Tadeusz will put a link as to where that can be found uh, because all this takes lots of lots of money because everything for these people is free. If you note here, the box that this woman is carrying is in, in uh, uh, a used box of matzah. Uh, of course, she and her family are not Jewish. 95% of the people being helped are not Jewish because 95% of the Ukrainian refugees are not Jewish. JCC Krakow makes zero, uh, zero uh, discrimination. It's, this is open for everyone, all, all refugees. This is true to
people, um, which in essence really is what, what Yiddishkeit and Judaism should really be about. Uh, so that is an empty box of matzah. Uh, and uh, whether she even knew what the box was or not, who knows, but, uh, she, but they were very happy um, to take that. And um, this family is from Kiev. This is Carolina from Severodonetsk, Severodonetsk uh, waiting in the courtyard. People, the courtyard is a very safe place for people to be. It's where kids play. Uh, it's um, where uh, adults uh, check their, their cell phones, their mobile phones. They, they see, they, they converse, they, they, uh, they sit, they eat their lunch, which is free coming from inside the building, that free lunches, free food. Uh, these are kids, refugee kids playing in the, in the courtyard uh, at the Toby family playground while their moms are waiting in line. The words in Ukraine, in Ukrainian on the blackboard in the upper left says, I love Ukraine. And in the center of the board says, glory to Ukraine and its heroes. Uh, this boy, uh, this family uh, is from Kamenets Podolsk, Kamenets Podolsky, which is close to actually where my maternal grandmother came from. And, um, his, this is nine-year-old Kirill asking his mom for something while other people are waiting online uh, just before getting access to the distribution center. From very, very young, she's four years old, uh, and she is Lydia from Rovno, to 100-year-old Natalia from Kharkiv. Um, uh, Natalia is, was there with her daughter, who's in the background eating her free lunch um, in the JCC Krakow courtyard, uh, um, um, actually amidst a photography exhibit. Then this was this past summer. Kids play. These balloons were left over from the this past year's Ride for the Living. Um, which finally did take place three years after the last one. And, um, and uh, there will be a picture of that later on as well. Um, people line up. I mean, I, I can't stress enough how people wait uh, patiently because the, the distribution center, the room is not overcrowded. It's, it's regulated so that people have room to, to to basically to shop, to try on articles of clothing, to, you know, to, to get what they want without being hassled, without being pushed. So this is waiting outside the gate and the line goes all the way through to inside the courtyard, waiting and just patiently waiting in line. Um, from April when it was cold to summer when it's hot. Um, passports in hand, uh, because they have to show that they're actual refugees coming after a certain date, and then they they go in and they're helped. Uh, like I mentioned before, volunteers, uh, volunteers from around the world, international volunteers take the bulk items and, and, and reduce them in size to make them a personal size so that people can take uh, and, 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 and not overtake. So from and there's, there's a line behind. All these items will be gone very shortly. Uh, from it, and inside as well, it's everything is, is, is volunteers and as well as staff and everything is reduced to a personal level. Inside the distribution center now, um, these are um, women. Uh, and again, primarily, these are primarily women and children because uh, Ukrainian men from military age from 18 to 60 stay in Ukraine. Um, unless they have a medical exemption uh, or, or if they have three children or more, then they're in Ukraine, either they're fighting or they're working to help the economy. So these are primarily women and with their children. Um, these women are looking at over-the-counter medication, medicines. Uh, now, if this came from the United States, they're in English. They don't know what they say. So there are people to try and help to help them figure out what it is that they might need. 
this is a one and a half year old, Emilia, with her mom. Uh, and they're from Zaporizhia. Um, mom is picking out clothing for her one and a half year old daughter. And again, she's not being hassled. There aren't a lot of people around her. It's a slow, you know, if you walk into the room, it looks like there's hardly anybody there because everyone's waiting in line so that no one will be rushed. Uh, this is seven year old Zlata um, asking her mom, Olena, for permission to take, to take something. Um, they're from Nijin. A woman asking for two, and she'll get him. Uh, this is a woman who is um, uh, examining these large packaged crackers, which she didn't know what they were. Well, this is during Passover time, and this is, is cellophane, um, a cellophane package of matzah. Well, she had never seen matzah before. Uh, and um, so she was examining to see really what it was before taking it. Uh, shoes, uh, again, clothing shoes. Shoes are bulky. So a lot of people had to leave in a hurry uh, and more than, or they couldn't pack as much as they would lo have loved to have packed because they had no idea when they were going back, if they were going back. So shoes were bulky. This is a woman literally trying on shoes. And all this is inside the distribution center, which is in the, in the building itself, which is right inside the front door of, of, the, of JCC Krakow. Um, let's see. This is Elia from Odessa. Uh, these are refugees from all over Ukraine. This young mom had just come out of the of the um, of the of the center, the district, the free shop. Um, she has her items on the bottom of the stroller, and she's uh, she's assisting her baby. Uh, again, volunteers in and out, uh, as well as staff who speak Ukrainian. This is Passover. JC JCC Krakow hosted five different seders, one of them being strictly for Ukrainian refugees, which is what this is. Uh, the last seder I'd photographed in Poland was in Warsaw, 1979. So uh, this was rather exceptionally nice. Um, this man is Yaakov Tmarkin. He's there with his uh, wife Svetlana. Uh, on his uh, on his other side is his daughter-in-law, and uh, and there's two of his grandchildren there as well. Uh, okay, this is one of his two grandchildren, and this is a seder strictly for Ukrainians, uh, and translated by a Ukrainian refugee. Uh, into Ukrainian for people to understand. This woman's name is Victoria, and she is from Nijin. Uh, and the word tattooed on her on her um, hand, uh, on the side of her hand, is in Ukrainian state victorious. Uh, this is Yaakov in his hotel room with his wife Svetlana uh, a few days later. Um, hotel rooms. This is paid for by JCC Krakow. Um, these people, not everyone, but many, many, many Ukrainian refugees, uh, Jews or non-Jews, it makes, again, zero difference, um, are provided with free hotel rooms. It doesn't cost them anything. Um, JCC Krakow provides hotel rooms, uh, subsidizes apartments. Uh, this is ongoing. This continues to this day. JCC Krakow also in April hosted a um, traditional Ukrainian Easter party, uh, Orthodox Easter party. Um, this is... Uh, Mariana with her daughter Sophia, uh, and they are from Kiev. 
this Easter party featured uh, 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 folk singing here, three, three women uh, on, on an iPhone doing traditional folk singing. Um, the uh, traditional Ukrainian cymbali was, placed, was played, dancing took place. Uh, again, these are, this is all social. This is all to help people be people and, and live a, a life while, uh, while all hell is breaking loose in their, in their neighboring country. Um, speaking about neighboring countries, I should mention some, some uh, actual facts and figures. Uh, as of now, as of this month, uh, the UN list, um, listed 7.7 .7 million refugees across Europe. 7.7 .7 million, 5.4 million of these people came through Poland because it's, it's a border, it's a, it's a neighboring, it's on the border, it's a neighbor. Of that, of that amount, one and a half million, it's estimated or more, have, cho have stayed. They're in Poland. Now, um, some are going back and forth. Some are taking permanent residence. Um, uh, the Jewish community, as well as, as, well as in Polish individual Poles, as well as the Polish government, uh, have, have really stepped up to the plate on, on this one. This has been... Um, uh, what people should be doing to help other people, really. This picture, this is now in a daycare center um, administered by JCC Cracker. Uh, uh, I'll be showing pictures where JCC Cracker has been as partnered with other, with other groups. Um, this is called in, in Ukrainian Vitalnia, which means living room. Uh, Vitania is a free safe space daycare for moms and children. Um, this is Polina, who is from Irpin. Um, she's on the couch with, with a toddler, not hers. Her daughter is actually on the standing on the couch. Uh, and she had been in Krakow for seven, seven weeks. Um, Vitania, again, it's, it's, it's called a safe space, but it's technically it's called living room. Kids in Vitania. Nap time in Vitalnia. This woman is Dasha. Um, she's from um, Kivi Ria uh, in Ukraine. She had been in Krakow for a month at the time. Um, she works at this daycare center five days a week and is paid for her efforts, um, paid by JCC Krakow. Um, she loves working with kids, which is what she did before fleeing her country. Dasha is also learning Polish offered through this cooperative, this Vitalnia cooperative. Um, the little one she's cuddling cried out specifically for her to be able to take, take a nap. This is nap time a couple of months later. This is now in July. And left to right, that's Dima, Eva, Alyssa, and Nastya. Um, this is Vital uh, Vitalnia. This is the uh, a free Polish language class. Um, a lot of people are trying to learn Polish um, and to get jobs, uh, to be able to get jobs, uh, better jobs where they, they need to, to understand and speak the language. Um, this is Alina giving her son Daryl some needed attention during the class. Uh, but again, Free language classes, all for Ukrainian refugees. Moving to another area in Krakow, uh, this is Anya from Zaporizhia. Uh, this is a, a center known strictly strictly by its street name, and it's called Radzivilovska. Uh, it's often the first point of help for many refugees when they arrive in Krakow, not in the country, but when they arrive in Krakow. This is upstairs in an old, in, in a, in an, uh, upstairs, it's an 80 bed hostel um, that was used as a theater. Uh, downstairs, most pe many people never even see upstairs because downstairs is where they're being helped um, to, to, uh, to locate housing, uh, also with food. Uh, JCC Krakow is partnering with several other groups 
to um, to administer this uh, this center. Um, Anya arrived that morning. The next day, she was planning on going to Portugal um, to see friends. Her boyfriend was in the Ukrainian army, uh, and um, usually people only spend one or two nights in this facility before moving on. This is in that, in that, in that, in Radzivolovska. Uh, this is Marina with her one-year-old. Um, Marina and her husband and three children had arrived the day before. They had left Kyiv at the end of March. Uh, her husband, Artem, told me he was able to leave Ukraine because of the ruling of having three children. Uh, I never knew that. Marina's mom was also with them. Uh, they had been trying to get, they were hoping to get to Canada through a Canadian program. And I learned as of June, they were successful. Speaking about hotel rooms, I met this woman, Victoria, um, at the hotel that I was staying at. Um, her room was, her, her room, uh, she was there with her, with her daughter, uh, Alice, and she had been there a couple of weeks. The hotel room was completely paid for. Uh, she is, um, she was looking for actually for a more permanent apartment on her cell phone when, when we started to speak. Uh, she's from Kharkiv. Uh, uh, she had been there again for two weeks. She sells furniture online and wanted to expand in Europe. She speaks English well, which is very, very helpful, of course. And what she told me that morning was, I couldn't imagine breakfast in Casimir's. From Kharkiv to here, from darkness to light, we are very thankful. This is her daughter, Alice, with her pet guinea pig inside the hotel. Um, Uh, Victoria further went on to tell me that an American volunteer drove them from Kharkiv directly to Krakow. And she said when they were one meter over the border inside Poland, she began to lose her fear. She also said, we're safe now, that's all we need. This is the two of them in the old city of Krakow, in the old town, looking up at the trumpet player uh, who does the, the hourly bugle calls from St. Mary's Cathedral. And this is a couple of months later. This is Alice in the, the Vitalnia sponsored, the JCC sponsored Vitalnia art therapy class, uh, class which, they, which is also part of Vitalnia. These are Romani people, um, the Roma. Um, when I was growing up, I learned now it's a pejorative, but I always, we always knew of them as called gypsies, but that's no longer cool to say. So these are Roma Ukrainian refugees in the basement cafeteria slash dining room of the hostel that they were staying at, uh, where JCC Cracker provided you know, all the groceries. Uh, at the time, approximately 130 Roma people were staying there. Now they're housed in separate locations, but then they were all there. I found them to be very, very warm, very nice, uh, sweet people um, who do a lot of cooking. This is Tanya with her daughter, Ilana, uh, taking a break from, from cooking to pose. Uh, and this is actually Tanya's mother and Ilana's grandmother, uh, Jana. And she's in the basement courtyard of this hostel, uh, happens to be in front of, of a mural of a forest, uh, which just made a very, very nice background. Uh, they're very expressive people, Roma in general. So this is Nadia uh, exchanging ideas uh, with her friend. And they're very, very open to exchange ideas with each other. Uh, this is Nadia with her grandson.
moving outside of Krakow. This is um, a residential palace called Pashkovka. It's 25 kilometers outside of Krakow. Um, when I was there in April, uh, and JCC Krakow maintains it and uh, provides assistance and, and guidance and, uh, and, and help people there. This was being, uh, the palace itself was being cleaned up uh, so that the people here and more um, could get in to, to live there. Uh, most of them were, first, were staying across the road at a smaller, uh, a smaller hotel, also part of the grounds. Uh, this is Dina, Diana from, um, I can't even pronounce this, uh, from Dina Prozerzhinsk uh, in Ukraine. Uh, she was there with her mom and this is during a Zumba class this past summer. So this is the back part of the palace. Uh, this is Nadegna from Kharkiv. Um, this is listening intently to directors and personnel from JCC Krakow in the first meeting um, with, with, with the refugees at the palace. This is Helenochka uh, with her youngest daughter, Vanessa. Um, they're refugees from Venezia. And they're on the bed that they share with, um, with Helenochka's two other daughters who have since, by the way, gone back, two other older daughters who have since gone back to Ukraine. Um, as of July, Helenochka and her daughter were living in a hotel near JCC Krakow, of course, paid for by JCC Krakow. Uh, um, uh, she, Helenochka is trying to get to Israel um, but has, uh, has trouble showing the quote unquote proper documents to show her Jewish roots. Um, because, and um, last I heard, and she was, if anyone on this Zoom uh, knows of, of uh, has any um, access or any knowledge or can help this woman and her daughter get to immigrate to, emigrate to Israel, please email me and I'll, I'll follow through with that. Um, so as of July, they were, she was still trying, um, but you needed, you need to show certain kind of paperwork, which she don't, she doesn't have paperwork and she's a refugee. Uh, this is uh, Helenochka who hanging laundry outside of, uh, on, on the balcony of, of that, of that room where they were living. And, and, and when we left that day, she said goodbye to us and the JCC personnel in the car and just spontaneously put her hands together uh, in gratitude to, to thank us for everything that was being done. This is Nastya. Uh, Nastya here is speaking to a group uh, visiting JCC Krakow, telling them of her experience, uh, of her experiences. Nastya is a Ukrainian refugee, although she doesn't consider herself a refugee. Um, she uh, is now a full-time employee of JCC Krakow. Um, she, uh, she's telling this group about her seven-day ordeal of waking up to bombs, um, uh, and, and arriving in Krakow, where she is now permanently employed. Uh, her, she was, her parents also came, they got out from, uh, from Mikolaev. And um, this is the first walk that Nastya did with her mother around Krakow. By chance, they came upon this, uh, this wall statue uh, from the um, commemorating the Holodomor, which was the famine of 1932-33, uh, which the Stalin, the Stalin instigated um, famine, which killed almost 4 million Ukrainians. Um, uh, telling, uh, telling Nastya's story, when the air raid sirens started, they uh, crossed the Romanian border. First, they went to Chernivtsi. Uh, with with her husband, they had a few hours to pack. They heard they heard you know the bombs going off. They packed their bags. A few hours later, they were on the road, um, where they stayed to Trinivtsi. And when air raid sirens started there a couple of days later, 
her, her husband drove them both to the border where they walked across. Um, they, um, they spent a couple of nights in the Romanian mountains before finding a family with a car who took them on a full day drive to the Hungarian border. Uh, and uh, eventually got to Krakow where she stayed with friends who told her of JCC. Uh, she went um, to the distribution center, found out that her, her daughter could attend a, uh, a free kindergarten. Um, she speaks Ukrainian, she speaks English, she speaks some Hebrew. She happens to be Jewish. Uh, her mom is Jewish. So here her mom, it was talking about the Holodomor. Uh, and so if you add them all up, because um, uh, her mom has Armenian descent also. So from the, from, from the Armenian genocide to the Holodomor to the Holocaust itself, that's three genocides that this family has gone through. And if you consider what's going on there now, you might consider it a fourth. Uh, this is Vasilisa, uh, Nastya's daughter who's having her hair braided by grandma, Grandma Victoria, um, before breakfast and um, going to, to free kindergarten at JCC Crackle. Um, this is Vasilisa getting her fingernails clipped before she and her mom go on their way to JCC Krakow, where Nastya would be working and Vasilisa goes to kindergarten. Here they happen to be passing another Ukrainian family, mom and son, with their belongings outside an apartment waiting um, to see an apartment. Uh, this is just, this is just, just happening. You know, this is just life continuing, life going on. This is Vasilisa in Frida, the kindergarten, just whispering to a friend, whispering a secret. And this was then a couple of months later. This is at the JCC, um, uh, JCC Krakow Shabbat dinner that took place during the Jewish Cultural Festival um, this past this past summer. Uh, this was on July first, and this is Vasilisa with Mom Nastya. Now, Victoria, uh, uh, Nastya's mom and father both volunteer at JCC Krakow. Nastya, by the way, now is is has has an apartment, um, she works there full time. She uh, will be living full time in Krakow with her family and hopefully at some point her husband, who of course is in Ukraine, will be able to join them. And she is making a new life for herself there uh, as are other people. Now we're outside of the JCC Krakow building, this is a, uh, a place called Shafa Dobra in Polish. In English, it's called Closet of Good. Um, JCC Krakow partnered with several other uh, institutions um, for this, uh, with this, this uh, center. These are international volunteers um, sorting through recently received clothing. Um, the Shafa Dobra is no longer at this location. Um, but when they were when at when they were at this location and and partnered with JCC, they had distributed four hundred thousand items of clothing to eighty thousand refugees from here. Uh, this is Kat Katarina with her daughter Zlatislava uh, and her panda wearing hat friends. Panda bear wearing hat friends. Uh, this is here in Shafa Dobra. Um, uh, they're um, basically they're FaceTiming with, with friends, relatives still in, in Ukraine. Uh, and they're, um, they're, they're alive, they're well, they're safe, and, and they're uh, getting free supplies. All Shafa Dobra. This is a, a hostel uh, in Krakow that JCC Krakow rented rooms for and then organized a summer camp, sleepover camp 
for Ukrainian refugee kids. Um, these boys are 12 year old twin brothers, Maxim and Artem, and they're from Lviv. This is the first day of arrival. Um, their, um, their mom works at the distribution center at the JCC itself. Um, this is when they first arrived within two hours after eating lunch with the small group that, that had arrived for the first day. Within two hours, they were at a nearby beach, uh, a, lake, you know, a lake and beach um, with, their, with their group of friends. Uh, and they were there and, and there were a couple of moms came as well. Moving from Krakow to Warsaw, you know, I don't want this, I don't want you all to think this is all, um, th this is the Jewish community all over as well as the Polish government. This is, this is, this is everything going on, but my concentration was through JCC, which is why most of these pictures are JCC related. Um, this is in Warsaw. This is the Warsaw Free Shops. Uh, uh, let's see. This uh, a woman looking for a stuffed animal for her, you know, for, for her child. Uh, this was located in the Jewish Community Administrative Building, also called the Gamina. Um, and here, like, it, like in, in JCC Krakow, clothing, medicine, toys, hygienic supplies, and more are given. It's administered by the Warsaw Jewish Community, uh, JDC, and the Pushka Foundation. Uh, it was established at the beginning of the Russian invasion, Russian invasion. And, uh, and supplies were also brought to refugees housed in hotels paid for by, by the JDC. I didn't have much time in Warsaw, but I was able to photograph here. This is Oksana and her daughter Juliana from Turnipole, and they're picking out candies in the Warsaw Free Shop. Uh, this is 14-year-old Juliana expressing her disapproval of a pair of pants being offered. Um, this room was a former gymnasium in this building. Uh, and even if it's free, if it doesn't, if it's not right, it's not right. But this, this is the mother and daughter and friend with what they've, they've taken and received. It had been their first time there, uh, first and only time there. Behind them are other Ukrainian refugees awaiting access to the building. Uh, this is from a chartered bus and it is the exterior of the uh, Shemish, Shemish Poland located humanitarian, humanitarian aid center. Uh, the humanitarian aid center is often, first, first it was established by the Polish government uh, in this former shopping mall and uh, it, is, it was often the very first stop of, of refugees once they entered Poland. Um, there was a lot of, lots of beds, um, lots of NGOs. Uh, this particular picture, in a, this is in a chaotic corridor. Um, this, this mother was lost in thought, but not letting go of her baby stroller. Uh, attached to this wall actually were drawings from Israeli school children offering their hope for peace and wishing good luck and love. I was able to get access to this location because JCC Krakow partners with an event, evangelical group that works with this with this um, uh, with this with this group, uh, this organization, and through its director, uh, I was very luckily able to get access and have limited access, limited photography. Again, uh, everything, a, a makeshift soccer game in the hallway. It's, um, people, when, uh, when the refugees first get there, they register. Uh, this, this couple are from uh, Poltava and they'll be given wristbands uh, like everyone else once they register with a code, it's, which is then scanned and um, once they're scanned, they go out into, into the, uh, the routes within, within the shopping mall complex. And um, they can then visit various NGOs from different countries. There's different uh, rooms set up with cots, uh, if they're gonna be sleeping there for how long. Um, this is Roslana from Poltava in one of, one of the uh, rooms with a cot. Uh, 
This is a 12 year old uh, in that same room. This is 12 year old Dasha. Uh, she was traveling with her brother and mother Natalia. They're from Kharkiv. They had arrived an hour, a day earlier and were planning on leaving the next day for the Czech Republic. In the humanitarian aid center located in a former motorcycle shop is the Hadassah International Humanitarian Medical uh, Mission where they'd set up a clinic um, helping people. I was very lucky uh, to get um, allowed access into this facility. Uh, this is Ivan who's 11, recently arrived from arrived from Mikolaev who had a neck injury. Um, care to these people have been given to over 35,000 Ukrainian refugees have been uh, involved in this health. It, 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 third, let me repeat that. 35,000 Ukrainian refugees have been helped through this clinic. Um, approximately 100 of uh, uh, Hadassah health and logistic professional health and logistics professionals have volunteered for an average of 10 days each in this clinic. We're now on the border of Medica, which is uh, a very short drive from the humanitarian aid center. This is a group who has just arrived with all their belongings. Um, they're um, many are bewildered. Uh, and literally have just gotten there. Uh, this couple have just crossed the border on foot uh, at Medica, the Medica border. Um, again, bewilderment sometimes is just written all over everyone's faces. Uh, at Medica, there are tents set up um, by different NGOs, different humanitarian aid um, uh, uh, organizations to help people. Going back to the ride from the ride to the living from 2019, uh, this past year, a few months ago, was the first in person ride for the living. Um, JCC sponsored Cracker Ride for the Living. Uh, but this year, the day before the actual ride, a small group of international riders from um, Israel, Ukraine, and Poland left from the Medica border. This is the Medica border uh, to, to ride through um, to Birkenau and then onwards to JCC Krakow along with everyone else. This year though, everything, any monies raised, all monies raised went for Ukrainian relief, uh, 100%. This picture at the border though shows a Ukrainian refugee on the right side coming back into Ukraine, going back into Ukraine with supplies. People go back and forth. Full circle, gate of JCC, Krakow, where people wait. People wait to get their items, get free food, free everything, um, because JCC helps. They help people. Uh, and you can help too. Thank you very much. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Um, no, you don't have to because. Um, okay. Okay. Fine. Actually, it's I'm very done. Nice. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, it was really, really very moving um, presentation, and there was a lot of comments uh, on the chat. How wonderful it was! Even someone wrote that you are a proper mensch. And yes. um, there are a few questions, and actually, let me start uh, with uh, with a technical one. Uh, Alessandra, mm, let me check. Alessandra Alio asked, uh, and I I, I I I quote this question especially to uh, to break a bit the um, the narration. But what camera do you use for these photographs, and what settings? and lens yeah actually this is very important as you are the photographer okay um most of these pictures uh were made with leica cameras leica film cameras m's 
um, with using two lenses, a 35 millimeter lens and a 50 millimeter lens. Some of them were also made with a digital camera, a small little Fuji um, um, X100 little digital camera um, with a fixed uh, equivalent 35 millimeter lens. Um, but as this was a continuation of my work on Polish Jews, which I've continued to keep it as film, even through the teens, even from 2013 onwards, um, I've kept that on film uh, because I make my own silver gelatin prints from these for exhibition and, uh, and it's a continuum. It's a, con it's a continuous line from the seventies onwards. When I was, and just as an aside, when I wasn't there, when I was there in Poland, 2019 and photographed the last ride for the living, the reason I was there was because there was an exhibition of that work uh, in Krakow. Mm. That's the answer. Okay, okay, lovely. So I hope, uh, Alessandra, you are um, you are happy with the answers. Now um, let's uh, let's get back to more questions. Actually, there is a basic question which we never cannot omit. Uh, it was just asked a few minutes ago, but let me also quote it now. Ellen Meshnik is asking: Was there any anti-Semitism during Rose's stay? Or no? Okay. Next. That's, that, that's, that's a short and right answer, but um, I guess, you know, because um, there are so many stereotypes about Ukrainian and Ukrainian Jewish history. Yes. Uh, so yes. maybe you can, if you would like to elaborate, but you don't need to, if you want. Chuck? There's, there's, there's little to elaborate, really. I mean, there's a lot, a lot said about, um, can you, can you hear me or see me? Yes, yes, now it's starting, yeah. Okay, uh, a lot said about Polish anti-Semitism, Ukrainian anti-Semitism. Um, this is, um, uh, this is not the case now. Uh, first of all, what JCC is doing, um, uh, is, uh, and if this appeared as a love letter to JCC Krakow, it is, um, because there's no differentiation. It's not what happened, you know, uh, 80 years ago, uh, you know, like, you know, what happened in Ukraine maybe 80 years ago. It, it is none of that. This is people helping people, period, the end. Um, and, uh, and, People who haven't been there to Poland uh, itself in the last several years um, have um, connotations and, and um, uh, uh, ideas of, of continued anti-Semitism in Poland. Um, well, there's also philo-Semitism as well. There's also, there's, there's a, a cultural rebirth of a thousand, Jewish uh, Poland, uh, has a thousand year history and which was supposed to end uh, really um, uh, at, in you know, uh, a, a, a few decades ago. Um, but when communism ended, the wall came down, uh, Poland became a democracy, internet exploded, people find, started to find out their genealogical roots, grandmothers, grandparents started to tell of, of, their, of their Jewish roots to their grandchildren, um, grandchildren, even their children learning that they were brought up Polish Roman Catholic, uh, never knowing anything about Jewishness or Judaism. And now there are institutions in place in Poland like JCC Krakow where people can learn about their roots and their history. Um, and Polish history and Jewish history are intertwined. Um, uh, but enough about the anti-Semitism. What, what's going on here are people helping people and, um, and uh, uh, people give, literally people giving away their apartments or giving rooms to strangers, complete strangers, uh, to uh, Ukrainian refugee strangers. Uh, Polish government has done uh, an, an amazing job in helping people. Um, but as long as I'm on a roll, I wanna read a, a few facts and figures from JCC, um, they have sent over five tons of food and supplies to Bukha after the Russian retreat. They've sent truckloads of supplies into Ukraine um, uh, together with a partner who delivered tons to isolated towns and villages. Um, they have provided those hotel rooms 
um, that I mentioned. Of the nights of, of those hotel rooms uh, come up to, let's see, I have a number somewhere, uh, something like 22,000 nights of accumulated hotel room nights. Uh, it's, what they're doing is, is fantastic and, uh, and it takes money uh, and, as, and, and it's ongoing. It's, it's ongoing seven days a week. There is a line outside of JCC every single day. Okay, thank you, Chuck. Uh, let me just also add something because um, actually I'm originally from Poland and I know a bit about the situation there. So just just a symbol about the um, is there any anti-Semitism like ongoing daily? So you can see also on the picture which which Chuck is sharing now. Of course, this is from uh, from the time when the re refugees arrived, but. Actually, in order to enter JCC in Krakow or JCC in Warsaw, so there is no uh, there is no guards or security. You can just enter from the street, which is unlike in many uh, even cities in the United States. So this is also the uh, the other um, answer we could uh, share with you. Okay, let's get back to more questions. Actually, also Alessandra is asking. How do people apply to know about JCC and their help? Is there any selection criteria? Partially, you, you already answered, but please also. So select, I'm, I'm sorry, selection meaning what? Anyone, any Ukrainian refugee has access to JCC. Anyone, mm -hmm. if, that's, if that was the question. I think that was the question, but I think it was also how people got to know about a center at the JCC. Oh, sometimes it's through word of mouth, um, but they but they were also JCC Krakow is also partnered with other institutions. So at those other places, there will be a JCC banner and and the, the knowledge that um, you know that at this place at this building you can get food, you can get clothing, you can get everything for free. Um, Sometimes it's, you know, they just talk, these people, you know, they get, they become friendly, they talk amongst each other and, and they share information. Yeah. Um, by the way, uh, I already uh, wrote it a few times, but I uh, passed again in our chat window, the direct link where you can donate uh, money directly to JCC Krakow. Um, for that target of helping Ukrainian refugees. So um, here is the link again. Um, there was another question about uh, other Jewish organizations which were set up in Poland uh, to help Ukrainian refugees, which you already answered, like uh, the one at the border in Przemysl or Medica. Uh, if you would like to add something, please do. If not, I can also say a few words about other organizations I got to know? Jewish organizations from all over the world. Mm. Um, uh, organizations, synagogues um, have, have poured money and relief into Poland. Um, sometimes straight to JCC for the JCC to distribute for Ukrainian relief, sometimes through other Jewish organizations. Uh, there, there are, there's many, the Federation, there, there's individual synagogues. It's, it's, uh, it's it's coming in, you know, money has come in, a lot of money has come in for, to, help, to help people, to help people who are in a situation which is of no fault of their own. These are innocent people. And, uh, you know, and sometimes, you know, you look, you look online, on, on the line, let's say, of, of refugees waiting outside the JCC Krakow. These look like, you know, oftentimes they're middle-class, sometimes very well-dressed people, but they're stuck. You know, um, they're in a situation where nobody wants to find themselves. Um, some had to leave in a hurry. Uh, you know, some some didn't. Some you know, it's they're they're in a in a bad in a poor situation. Some are just waiting it out, looking forward to getting back home. Some have no homes to go back to. You know, some are you know living in denial. So it it it's a mix, and um, and what J, what JCC Krakow and other Jewish organizations uh, in Warsaw and, and organizations in general are doing, NGOs are helping people. And but what's what's and I want to stress with JCC Krakow, 
it, there's no delineation. Like only 5% of these refugees are Jewish, 5%. You no, know, a lot of these people, you know, sometimes when they're, when they're on, online going into JCC Krakow, they don't, know necess they don't necessarily know that it's a Jewish institution. You know, let's say by now they probably do, but it, 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 it makes no difference. They just know this is some place people are helping. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you very much. Um, another two questions, uh, actually slightly less pleasant, I would say, but but important. Uh, Rene Hirsch is asking, first of all, were there many orphans under 18 years old without their parents? Have you noticed? And the second, there were any women talking about being raped? Which this is the less present part of being a migrant, but um, no one shared that information with me. Um, but I did overhear of um, of women who who had been raped, but nobody, sh no one shared that information personally with me. Uh, as far as the orphans. Um, we're concerned. Uh, let's see, I have a fact here somewhere. Um, uh, because, okay, the JCC was supporting an orphanage, uh, supporting an orphanage from Chernihiv with 40 children to help to relocate to Poland. Um, and there are other. Um, the others that that were um, I didn't meet any orphans that I knew of, but they're they are there and they are also they are also being helped. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, if I if I may, I can uh, add something to the to the second part uh, regarding women. Uh, of course, there were some cases which even were in in describing the Polish media. Uh, but but quite quickly, Polish feminist and Polish anti-traffic uh, organizations sent also volunteers to the border, and yeah. they they were distributing uh, leaflets and they were asking women not to join any private transportation individually, especially with another man. So basically, uh, women and uh, women with children were advised to board uh, the government prepared buses or trains which were bringing people um, to to the cities. Of course, right. what happened later, we don't know, but at least uh, at the border, women were advised uh, not to travel uh, lonely with men. So this is a uh, basic thing. Okay, we have the last question from Jeremy Reuven. Uh, and also, you can elaborate, and I can, and I can ask. I can add something later. Is the pressure still on, or the amount of Ukrainians coming to Poland slowing down? There's less Ukrainians online at JCC Krakow now than there was in April. Now they're down uh, at the at the height it was around 600. Now supposedly it's around four to five hundred, but that will depend. That depends on what happens in and what Russia does, and if there's going to be another influx. Um, it's uh, but it's ongoing. It, it it hasn't stopped. Let me let's just say it has not stopped, and it can easily the volume can easily turn up again. Uh, yes, exactly. I mean, um, generally, I would like to uh, add that uh, during the peak time, there was around three and a half million refugees. Some of them, probably around one million, left for another Western European countries. Um, during the summer period, uh, when there was a sort of um, situation in Ukraine when none of the uh, sides, nor Ukrainian, nor Russian, were showing any any movement. Um, so some refugees, um, <clears throat> either temporarily, we don't know, they got back, especially to the western part of Ukraine, not eastern part, probably for a certain period of time, shorter time. Uh, Poland 
Polish state distributed of registered formally uh, one and a half million Ukrainians. I mean, registered in terms they got Polish ID number. Yeah. Uh, but of course, probably not all of them register themselves. Uh, so the estimation is that there is around uh, one and a half, between one and a half million up to two million people currently in Poland. The, the pressure is indeed lower, but I know that the Polish state is expecting bigger influx again now before the winter or at the beginning of winter, especially that Russia, as you could learn lately, is destroying power plants and heating systems in Ukraine. So basically there, were, the, the, there might be additional uh, wave of refugees who will simply escape Ukraine um, due to the cold. Right. And I think that um, that's all from my side. If I can also add, um, this is also a private comment, but you know, as, as we learn, about this great help from JCC and other organizations as well. We have to remember that all of this is also possible due to the political uh, uh, support, which, for example, you know, United States is bringing to Ukraine. So we cannot forget that we have these wonderful people and organizations, Jewish and also not Jewish, who are helping. But we have to remember about right political choices <laughs> Because without those political choices, we uh, we won't be able to help refugees. And I'm saying this as we are two weeks before midterms in the States. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to remember about this. OK, Chuck, would you like to add anything? Uh, <clears throat> I thank you for the opportunity to show to show this work and um, and hopefully this can uh, lead to help more people um, because they need it. And they're, uh, again, through no fault of their own. These are just primarily nice people who are in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. and thank you. Thank you very much, Chuck. It was really very moving uh, presentation and beautiful pictures. And uh, I would like to remind all of you that this webinar was recorded and will be available in a few days on our website, with, which I just post uh, in a chat window. So please share with your friends. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. If again, if anyone of you would like to donate to JCC Krakow for Ukrainian refugees, please do follow the link I uh, put also in the chat. And let's hope for a better future for Ukraine and other countries in similar conflicts. Thank you very much and have a good afternoon and good evening. Thank you. So thank you again, Chuck. It was really wonderful. Oh, good. Thanks.